Alexander Armstrong and a very warm welcome to a special celebrity edition of Pointless, the quiz show that puts obscure knowledge to the test. Let's meet today's Pointless celebrities. <laughs> Couple number one. I'm Oliver Phelps and I'm here with my uh, brother James and we met about 26 years ago in my mum's womb. Uh, since then we've been acting and you probably recognise us from the Harry Potter series. Couple number two. Yes, well, uh, I'm Peter Purvis, and uh, this is my dear little friend John Noakes. I spent <laughs> ten and a half years trying to keep him under control on Blue Peter. I'm still having to do it. Here, behave yourself. <laughs> and couple number three. And this is Janet Street Porter. I'm Christopher Biggins, and I'm an honorary loose woman. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And our fourth and final couple. Good evening. I'm Ricky Gross. This beautiful creature is Natalie Cassidy. You probably might know us from such obscure programmes such as EastEnders <laughs> and Strictly Come Dancing. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you all very much indeed. These are our contestants. <laughs> Thank you all very much indeed. We'll be finding out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. There's only one person left for me to introduce. He's here to prove this game isn't rocket science, apart from today's round on rocket science. It's my pointless friend, it's Richard. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, can you believe we've got Peter Purvis and John Noakes in this no. studio? Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, Genuinely a childhood dream come true. And this is the studio where you filmed lots of Blue Peter as well, isn't it? Studio 6 at BBC. It is, yeah. We, which we is did a... all, all the big studios here, yeah. But also... Have John Noakes and Christopher Biggins on the same show. <laughs> we know it, it could be a long evening, <laughs> I suspect. <laughs> don't you think? <laughs> there we go. Now, all our questions on pointers have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers those 100 people didn't get. Now, everyone's trying to find a pointless answer, of course, that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special, and each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity, we start off with a jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> so, right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. OK, in this round, I'll take an answer from each of you. There's to be no conferring. And whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, so try and make sure that is not you. OK, our first category today is... It's people. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and our question concerns... Famous people whose surnames begin with M. Famous people whose surnames begin with M. Richard. On each pass, we're going to give you seven clues to famous people throughout history whose surnames begin with M. If you can identify a nice obscure one, you're going to score fewer points, but give us an incorrect answer, you're going to score 100 points. It's going to be 14 in all to have a go at home. Good luck. OK, so we're looking for the names of these famous people hinted at by these clues. All their surnames start with M. And here's our first board of seven. Was born Farrokh Bulsara. Received the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1909, co-wrote Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto, led England to victory in the 1966 FIFA World Cup, star who famously sang Happy Birthday to John F. Kennedy in 1962, English author of the play Dr Faustus, and the Jamaican singer-songwriter born in 1945. I will read all of those again. Was born Farrokh Bulsara. Received the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1909. Co-wrote Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto. Led England to victory in the 1966 FIFA World Cup. The star who famously sang Happy Birthday to John F. Kennedy in 1962. The English author of the play Dr Faustus. And Jamaican singer-songwriter born in 1945. Now, James, there we are. Welcome to Pointless. Thank Great you to have you here. Now, you and Oliver have had a fantastic, fantastic ride for the last... I guess, what, 12, 14 years? Well, yeah, we started filming The Potters in 2000, and the last one came out in 2011, so... Brilliant. The two older Weasley brothers, the twins. Can you go anywhere in the world and not be recognised? With this colour hair, yeah. Because uh, everyone sure. thinks we're ginger. Yeah, so, good trick. Um, I have actually... Uh, we were filming... I think we just finished filming the second movie, and we went on holiday to Mexico, and I was swimming in the sea, and I actually had ginger hair at the time. And this lady swam out to me and said, are you in Harry Potter? And I was, like, just in the ocean. It's like, yeah. So, oh, OK, great, and just swam back. <laughs> so, <laughs> very good. Now then, James, 
How are we feeling about these people beginning with M? Uh, I'm going to go for the top one. Um, was born Faraka Bulshara Sara. Um, I believe that was Freddie Mercury. Freddie Mercury, says James. Freddie Mercury, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Freddie Mercury. It is absolutely right. Fifteen. Fifty, that's a great score. Fifteen for Freddie Mercury. Great start, James. Very well done. Yeah, spent the bulk of his childhood in India at boarding school. Freddie Mercury. Now then, Peter. Peter, yes. a very, very warm, pointless welcome to you. Thank you very much. Great to have you here. I mean, two, as you said, two improper stars from the yeah. 1970s. Blue Peter, watched by colossal audiences. Um, it's fabulous to have you here. Of course, we know you more recently from hosting Crufts. Yes. Which you've yeah. done for a number of years. Are you, are you 30, a... 34. Wow. Very good indeed. And uh, what are you up to these days, Peter? I'm doing quite a lot of things with uh, Doctor Who because, I, of course, I was in that as well. Were. We did that here as well, but this studio wasn't built then. Stephen Taylor you I was, played yeah. in Doctor Who. That was even pre-Blue Peter. It was, yeah. Well, who's your doctor? William Hartnell, the first doctor. Very good indeed. How exciting. Well, OK, here we are. We have this board of people beginning with M. There are six of them left there, Peter. Yeah, it was a good shout. I would have gone for the top one, but I, I think I'll go for uh, Karl Marx. Das Kapital, Communist Karl Manifesto. Karl Marx, says Peter. Karl Marx, the author of Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Karl Marx. It's absolutely right. 15 is our lowest score so far. 54. Karl Marx. <laughs> it's a correct answer, but it's a popular one. Well played, Peter. Absolutely right. I yeah, wrote it uh, alongside Friedrich Engels. Now then, Janet. Yes. Janet, welcome. <laughs> Lovely to have you here. Thank and you. And you've come on with the biggins. <laughs> yes. Uh, we were separated you? at birth. <laughs> <laughs> we're twins like they are, yeah, really. Yeah, we really yeah, are. Actually, yes, yes. Yeah. Now, we're a miracle of genetic engineering. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if Biggins wouldn't keep dyeing his hair silver, it'd be much easier <laughs> to see the likeness. Yeah, but you don't know what colour mine really is. Yeah. But how do you two know each other? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you know each other, you've well, known each other for years. Well, we've got the but... loudest voices in any room. And we've Good. got lots of mutual friends, and we've just been around, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. We're kind of old, but yeah. acceptable. Exactly. <laughs> Certainly acceptable. Now then, uh, Janet, what about that board? I'm going to choose the English author of uh, Dr Faustus. Yes. Yeah. And You're on the answer. Go on. Christopher Marlowe. Christopher Marlowe, says Janet. Christopher Marlowe, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Christopher Marlowe. There we are. Now, 15. Our lowest score so far. Janet going to do... Oh, she smashes through that down to six. Very well done, Janet. <laughs> A score of six for Christopher Marlowe. Well played, Janet. It's the best, uh, best answer so far, best score yet. Yeah, he was only 29 when he died, Marlowe. He was stabbed in a row over a bill. But some people thought he was a spy, Marlowe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he said, what's that again? Yeah, he worked know... in the Secret Service. Well, Janet, he may have done, he may not have done. I'm not at liberty to tell you. <laughs> but certainly I work for a... Well, I'm... if I was a spy, I wouldn't tell you. But say I was, yeah. then I would know that kind of stuff. And yeah, yeah, he was would. a spy. Yeah, but you're, you are 100% not a spy. <laughs> Oh, I'm not a spy. No. <laughs> but if I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell you. No. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, now then, now then, Ricky. Hello. Welcome back to Thank Pointless. You. Great to have you here. Uh, obviously, a lot of people will know you as Gary, as you said, from EastEnders. Um, but, of course, we know you as almost a, a, a Pointless champion. You were one point away one last point time you were here. Yeah. You made it all the way through to the final. Yeah. And you were one away from the jackpot. Which is why you are back. <laughs> <laughs> back to see if I can just beat that one point, really, you know. But you've also done all sorts of other things. You've done, you've done celebrity MasterChef. Yep, MasterChef. Um, now that, that. Strictly Cam Dancing. Yeah. Different, different things, really, yeah. Yeah. How did you do on those? Um, not too bad. On the, well, the MasterChef was a bit of a letdown, as I used to be a chef. But um, <laughs> I don't know whether or not I had the head start that time. But on the Strictly, for instance, there were some people that had had more dancing experience, and I sort of kind of actually beat them. So it's a bit weird, that oh. one. But no, I, I, I have a go, shall we say. Yeah. Very good. OK, so we are looking for the surnames of these famous people which begin with M. How do we feel about this board? Because you're the last person to have it. You can, yeah. you can fill as, in as all, the, all the blanks, if you like. I'm going to go for... Um, see, Jamaica, immediately you go Bob Marley, don't you? 
Um, JFK, obviously, the Marilyn Monroe, it's all very much, they're much the same. I think uh, perhaps I'll just try for um, uh, Bobby Moore, the 66 World Cup final, if that's OK. OK, that's the one you're going to go for, Bobby Moore. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bobby Moore. 55's our highest score. You're through that. Oh. Down it goes, 37. Not bad at all. Very well done, Ricky. 37 for Bobby Moore. Uh, well done, Ricky. Yeah, uh, Pele said of him, of all the hundreds of defenders I've played against in my career, I would pick Bobby Moore as the best. That's quite a compliment, that isn't is, it? Isn't it? Uh, and you actually picked the best answer of the ones you knew there as well, Ricky, as well worked out, because Bob Marley is the Jamaican singer-songwriter, but would have scored you 46 points. Uh, Marilyn Monroe, absolutely right, sang Happy Birthday to JFK. She would have scored 84 points. That's pretty good going. And the best answer on the board by a mile is uh, received the Nobel Prize for Physics, Guillermo Marconi. Would have scored one point, so very, very well done if you said that at home. It's a terrific answer. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Six, very much the best score of that past Janet. Very well done, indeed. Well Janet and Biggins looking very strong at this juncture. Then up to 15 will be fine, James and Oliver. Up to 37, Ricky and Natalie. And then up to 55, where we find Peter and John. So, yes, you're a little bit ahead there. John, luckily, I think you're going to be brilliant in this next pass. <laughs> You're going to need to be if you're going to stay on. Uh, best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put seven more clues on the board. And here they come. We have got... Won the US Open Tennis Singles Championships in 2012. Published Paradise Lost in 1667. Wrote most of the goon shows. A member of the Beatles. Father-in-law of Daniel Day-Lewis, played Alex Delage in A Clockwork Orange, 1971, and elected president of the ANC in 1991. I'll read all of those again. Won the US Open Tennis Singles Championships in 2012, published Paradise Lost in 1667, wrote most of the goon shows, a member of the Beatles, father-in-law of Daniel Day-Lewis, played Alex Delage in A Clockwork Orange, 1971, and elected president of the ANC in 1991. Now, remember, we are looking for these... Famous people whose surnames begin with an M. And Natalie, Hello. you're going to try and find the one you think the fewest of our 100 I was people knew. Much knew. better on the other board. Well, I know the other board so was okay. Yeah, this is quite difficult. But hey, Natalie, welcome to the show. Thank nice to you. have you here. Most people will know you from playing Sonia. Of course. And of course, famously, playing the trumpet. True. You played the trumpet. Is that really you? Very the badly. Yeah, I played. But very bad. Very. Were you taught for the part? Or did, I was, or, yeah. Or did you bring I was just your... terrible. But I did have to learn to play terribly. It was the character. Oh, yes. Much harder so, than playing well. I'm obviously very, very good in real life. <laughs> of course. <laughs> now, you are the second highest scorers. The highest scorers, of course, being John and Peter on 55. You're on 37. So if you can score 17 or less, you will avoid becoming the new high scorers. <laughs> I'm not going to go for the, the sport at the top just because it's so current. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to have to go with a member of the Beatles and I'm going to go for Paul McCartney. OK, Paul McCartney, says Natalie. Paul McCartney, here is your red line. It's quite low. If you can get below that, you will avoid becoming our new high scorers. Mm. Paul McCartney, says Natalie. Let's see how many people said that. He's right. 73. Oh. 73 takes your total up to 110. It's a big score, Natalie, but much better than getting 100. It's uh, exactly the right thing to do. Yeah. I was really, when I saw the question, it took me really, I quite, for quite a long time, I was going through the Beatles and thinking... John Menon. Which one of those begins with M? <laughs> I thought, and I did, I thought, oh, George Morrison. <laughs> George Morrison, before, <laughs> I, before I realised. Now, Biggins. Sir. Big, welcome back to Pontus. You've nice been on Pontus back. before. It's great to have you here. And I lost. I was out yes, first. Yes, you did. You were Leslie first Joseph. Round. Leslie Joseph and myself disgraced ourselves. We're yeah, so you went far too quickly. Far too quickly. Not, that's not going to happen this time. In fact, I can tell you emphatically that's not going to happen this time. No. Even if you score 100, which you won't, no. you won't overtake the high scores of Natalie <laughs> and Ricky there on the, on the fourth podium. Right. Um, but, uh, Christopher, great to have you back here. We're very lucky that you can fit us in. Oh, I know. Your, I, I, I cancelled everything. Yes, well, I'm, I'm yeah. glad to... <laughs> Tea with the Queen. You yes, know. yes. She's devastated. Yeah, the two, oh, the two Queen's Tea. That, uh, <laughs> that's an annual event. <laughs> um, now, then, 
Yes. What are you thinking on this board? Have you got well, a great job? I think I'm going to go published Paradise Lost in 1667. And my answer is Milton. There we are. Milton, says Biggins. Milton. Let's see if that's right. Obviously, there's no red line for you. You're already through. But let's see how many people said Milton. Absolutely right. 33. 33 takes your total up to 39. Well played, Biggins. Absolutely, that poem concerns the biblical story of the fall of man and introduces Satan as, uh, as evil for the first time. That's where that all comes from. Naughty Satan. Naughty. Bad Satan. Uh, now then, John. A very warm welcome to you, John. I mean, a childhood hero of so many people's. Fabulous to have you here. And, uh, uh, John, listen, here we have a board. We have a board of people whose surnames begin with M. You are on 55 at the moment. The high scores on 110 are Natalie and Ricky. If you can score 54 or less, you are through to the next round. So what's your answer going to be, John? Uh, the writer of the Goon Show, Spike Milligan. Brilliant. <laughs> Spike Milligan, says John. OK, well, let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. There is your red line. Below that, you're through to the next round. Absolutely right. And you are through to the next round. Very well done. 44. 44, your score. 99, your total. Very well played, John. Yes, Spike Milligan. John Cleese referred to him as the great god of us all. <laughs> That's nice. Mm. Now then, Oliver. Yep. Finally, we come to you. 15 is what James scored in the first pass. Second lowest score there. Fantastic scoring. Yeah, he did well. I don't think I'm going to be getting, uh, getting to 15, but my answer is going to be elected president of the ANC in 1991, and that's Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, says Oliver. You're on 15. The high score is on 110 on Natalie and Ricky. If you can score 94 or less, you're through to round two. Let's see how many people said it. Here's your red line, nice and high. Yep, you've done it, you're through. Well done. 29. And the total, 44. Very, very well done indeed, Oliver. Well played, Oliver. And he was, uh, he was given the Nobel Peace Prize in 93 as well. In 2012, in London, they displayed the book. He had uh, someone smuggled in the complete works of Shakespeare to Robben Island, the prison where he was. And uh, he made lots of notes in it, and lots of the other prisoners he shared it with made, made lots of notes, and they put it on display in London. It's very powerful. They call it the Robben Island Bible. Nice, isn't it? Mm. Let's have a look at the rest of these answers. Uh, the top one is Andy Murray. Oh. That would have scored you 53 points. Um, played Alex uh, Delage in The Clockwork Orange is Malcolm McDowell. Yes. Mm. Like that. It's called 12. Now, the best answer on the board is the father-in-law of Daniel Day-Lewis. I know the answer. Do you know that one, Janet? Arthur Miller. Arthur Miller. Absolutely right. Another Marilyn Monroe connection there. Right. Arthur Miller, two points. He's married to Rebecca Miller, Arthur Miller's oh, daughter. Oh, right, of course he is. Yes. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Well, at the end of round one, our losing pair with their high score of 110. I'm really sorry, Natalie oh, and I'm Ricky. So, I'm That'd be sorry silly. for Ricky because no. he came on again. You'll have to have him on again. We'll have to, I'll make it regular. <laughs> to, yeah, once every month at least. That'd be yeah, silly. definitely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Natalie, that's really. Did you know any of those? Well, I mean, obviously, once we'd filled them in, I guess you might have known them. But Spike Miller again. My dad's going to kill me. I think that was it. You, yeah. Anyway, we have to say goodbye to you. Natalie and Rick, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank I'm really sorry. We had high hopes of you carrying off the trophy again. Um, but you'll have to come back another time. It'll just have to be that way. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Not on his own at all. <laughs> Natalie, you. Ricky, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. Well, now, sadly, at the end of this round, we will be having to say goodbye to another pair. Janet and Biggins, I don't think it's going to be you. That <laughs> performance was incredible. <laughs> and, of course, Biggins, you're, you're now the only veteran left. You've seen off Ricky. Mm. I know. Yes. That was a surprise. And, Janet, it sounded like you knew most of those answers. I did know all the answers, yeah. but I have to not tell him. No, I was trying no. to whisper. I was trying to jab him in the ribs when you weren't looking. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you just spelled I, things in more. I was trying to, you know... <laughs> I'm black and blue. Yeah. <laughs> Well, very best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is... Countries. Countries. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... 
Countries which contain the word dot, dot, dot. Richard. In a moment, Zander's about to show you five words. We're looking for any country of the world that has any of these words in them. So you see five words, any country of the world that has one of these five words in them, please. That's either in their common name or in their long-form name. Uh, as always, by country, we mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN. So any country of the world that contains one of the following words. Good luck, everyone. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So, uh, as Richard just mentioned, we're now going to put five words on the board, and here they are. They are Islands, New, Saint, South, United. Islands, New, Saint, South, United. So, remember, we are looking for any country whose name includes one of these words. Now then. Oliver, um, are you running a mile at the, at the sight of any of these words? No, not really. There, there's a few, but I'm trying not to, uh, not to go for the most obvious ones. Um, I'm going to go for St Lucia. St Lucia, says Oliver. St Lucia. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. St Lucia. Absolutely right. <laughs> 24. 24 for St Lucia. Well played, Oliver. Yeah, in the East Caribbean Sea. I bet if they had a Harry Potter premiere in St Lucia, there'd be a few hands going up. Uh, now then, John, any country which contains one of these words, Islands, New, Saint, South, United. Uh, New he Hebrides. New Hebrides, says John. New Hebrides. Let's see if that's right. And if it is... Let's see how many of our 100 people said New Hebrides. <laughs> oh! Bad luck, John, I'm sorry, an incorrect answer. I go home. That scores you the maximum of 100 points. Does he? Richard. Yeah, unlucky, John. You know what, it's worth going for an obscure one in this round, but New Hebrides, it, it, it used to be a country, it's now called uh, Vanuatu, the New yeah, Hebrides. I thought there was something yeah. in it. That's really, really unlucky. Now then, Janet. You slightly freaked me by saying these countries have changed names. Mm. New Caledonia. New Caledonia, says Janet. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 said it. Oh! No! Bad luck, Janet. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. Scores you the maximum of 100 points. We'll find out why. Yeah, sorry, Janet, uh, not a country, New Caledonia. It's a, it's a, there is an island called New Caledonia, but it belongs to France. So not a country in its own right. Should have just gone for a nice, safe, simple one. OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. 24, Oliver and James looking very strong indeed. Then up to 100, where John and Peter, Janet and Biggins are all four to be found. So Peter and Biggins, it's going to be between you. Whichever can come up with the most obscure country name will be surviving at the end of the round. OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for countries which contain the following words, and they are Islands, New, Saint, South and United. Now then, Biggins, you're a little bit exposed here. A little bit? <laughs> You went out on a country's question last time you were on. I did, I did. Oh, I can see from Janet's face she's got a good one. Yeah, I've got my other one that I didn't have just now. <laughs> I'm thought transference. No. <laughs> um, South Pacific. No. no. That's not a country. Is it a river? Is it a, 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 a sea? It's a musical. <laughs> it's a musical we can see from it. I can't believe it! Oh, oh dear, I'm sorry. OK, you're going to say South Pacific. <laughs> no! South Pacific. <laughs> There's no red line for you, Biggins, because no, you no. are already the joint high scorers. Let's just yeah. see what becomes of South Pacific. <laughs> Don't know why we're looking. We know the answer. No. <laughs> what a shame. You oh, unfortunately, you know. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. That scores you the maximum of 100 yeah. points, and it takes your total up to 200. Sorry. Oh, Biggins. No, South Pacific is, uh, is um, yes. Never is, never was a country. Maybe one day. You never know. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Peter. Peter, the high scorers now are Biggins and Janet on 200. You're on 100. If you can score 99 or less, 
Well, there, there's lots in there, aren't there? So, oh. take an easy one. Newfoundland. Newfoundland, says Peter. Newfoundland. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said it. Here is your red line. Very high. Newfoundland. Oh, no, I'm afraid that is an incorrect answer, Peter. No. Yes! Even I'm afraid. I <laughs> That's an incorrect answer. That also scores you the maximum of 100 points. Takes your total up to 200. There are a million sorry, I could have chosen. Sorry, sorry, Peter, but if you... It's news in Newfoundland. Isn't Newfoundland's not a country? It's not. It's part of Canada, I'm afraid. Oh. But if you ever wanted to know what Janet's reporter looks like doing a delighted dance, you've just got to turn around. <laughs> This is going well. Isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Now then, James. James, look at this. Uh, here's great news. You are in the head-to-head. -head. You're on 24. Even, doesn't matter what you score, you'll never ever take the 200s that your other two teams <laughs> have scored. Uh, anyway, there we are. You're on 24. Um, so, Ben, I, I was, when I was standing there, I was trying to think of the Olympic opening ceremony. I think of all the countries that come through, and you think, is that actually a country? And standing here, I actually thought that South Pacific may have come up. <laughs> I, um, could we check my answer? Yeah, hold on. I'll, yeah. <laughs> hold on, Biggins, I'll check. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah, you're, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'm just going to play safe and go with New Zealand. New Zealand, says James. Thank you. New Zealand. Now, then, there's no red line for you because you're already through, but let's see how many people said New Zealand. Absolutely right. 60 takes your total up to 84. Well played, James. Finally, safe, solid. We all know New Zealand as a country. Back in the 80s, there was a, famously there was, a, there was a 20 sheep for every person in New Zealand. Now it's only seven. Wow. Yeah. That's either great news for people or terrible news for sheep. I mean, can't work out. <laughs> it's a little bit of both, isn't it? A little bit of both. But anyway, hey, this we've is got exciting. a tie break. We've got deadlock. Yeah. Deadlock. <laughs> Now we're going to, have to go to the, we're going to have to go to the public vote. Is that how this works? Um, it's a tie. And as it's a tie, the pairs have to give me one more answer each, and the pair that gets the highest score will be eliminated. You may now confer. John and Peter, you go first. St Kitts and Nevis. St Kitts and Nevis, say Peter, or St Kitts and Nevis. St Kitts and Nevis. So then, Biggins and Janet, let's have an answer from you. Papua New, New Guinea. Guinea. Papua New Guinea. OK, so in the order they were given, St Kitts and Nevis. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. St Kitts and Nevis. St Kitts and Nevis is right. Down we go. Still going down. Seven. <laughs> St Kitts and Nevis. Taking your total up to 207. Now then. Biggins, you have a margin. If you can score six or less, if you can score six or less with your answer, Papua New Guinea, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's find out. Will it beat Kitts and Nevis? That's right. Down. Oh, 11. <laughs> 11 for Papua New Guinea. It takes your total up to 211. Very, very well played, Peter and John there, and tough luck, Biggs and Janet. So that's a great answer. Shame that, that presumably was the other one you had in the in the normal round, was it? Yes. Papua New Guinea. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what we should have done before he had his moment. <laughs> <laughs> he had his turn. My musical moment. There's a couple of pointless answers, and they're very tricksy ones. So I'd be very surprised if anyone got any either of these. But there's there's some other smaller answers. The two pointless answers. These are both the full titles of these countries. The United Mexican States is another name for Mexico, and the United Republic of Tanzania. Both of those would have been acceptable and would have been pointless. Uh, some of the low scorers, the Marshall Islands would have scored you one point. The newest country in the world, South Sudan, would have been a terrific answer, would have scored you two points, that. Uh, and St Vincent and the Grenadines would have been a good answer as well, would have scored you three points. Let's take a look at the uh, highest scorers, the ones that most of our hundreds said. South Korea, 36. New Zealand, 60. An absolute top of the shop, as you would expect, the United States of America. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So, at the end of round two, our losing pair with their high score of 211. I'm afraid it's Biggins and oh. Janet. Mm. 
well. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I, I honestly thought you were. I thought you were finalists. Yeah. And we just we had a moment there. We did. We, we had a moment. But I'm going to go take him outside and just beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, we wish you every every best wish. Thank you so much for coming and playing, Biggins and Jasmine. Lovely having you on the show. Thank you. Brilliant contestant. But for the two remaining pairs, they're getting one step closer to the final and the chance of taking home our jackpot for their charities as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> well, congratulations, James and Oliver, John and Peter. You are now only one round away from the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> now, obviously, only one pair can win that money. To decide which pair it's going to be, you're now going to go head-to-head. This time, you are allowed to confer. The first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. Well, very, very best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question. And it concerns... Canine stars. Oh, Canine stars. Richard. I'm going to show you five pictures of dogs now from films. You need to tell us which famous character these dogs are playing. Very best of luck. OK, let's reveal our five dogs in roles, and here they are. We have got... A... B... C... D... and E. There we are. There are five dogs. We want to know which roles they are playing. Now then, James and Oliver, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Uh, right, OK, there's, there's three of those that we know, um, but they're probably the most obvious. Yeah, we're going to go D, which is a... Hooch. 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 Hooch, say James and Oliver. D is Hooch. Now then. John and Peter, the rest of the board is yours. You can talk us through it, if you like. I don't, the only one we're dead does. certain on is B, which uh, is... Uh, I'm sure everyone will have. The, the little chihuahua or, or whatever, I'm, I, I should know that, and I can't remember. I'll have to go with B, which is Toto from Wizard of the Wild. OK, Toto. So we have Hooch v Toto. Uh, James and Oliver have said Hooch. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 said Hooch. It's absolutely right. 36. 36 for Hooch. John and Peter have gone for Toto. Let's see if Toto's right. Let's see how many people said Toto. Well, he's right. Peter thinks everyone's going to have said it. They haven't. 57. 57, which means, James and Oliver, after one question, you are up 1-0. Very well done, Richard. Well played, James and Oliver. Peter, do you know what breed Toto was from that...? Uh... Uh, it's, um, uh, it's a oh, terrier, but it's not a Scotty. It's a uh, oh, cairn. Oh, he's good. Yes, yeah, a female cairn terrier called Terry. Well done. Uh, unfortunately, you don't, get in, uh, you don't get a point <laughs> for it, but uh, it's very impressive. An extra bonus of uh, yeah. 19 would be good. Hooch, Hooch was from Turner and Hooch. Now, A, it's Beethoven. From the Beethoven oh, of series it of is. films. Of course it, is. Uh, it was a big scorer, though, 43 points. Um, C is a pointless answer. It's from As Good As It Gets, where Jack Nicholson won his Oscar. It's uh, Verdell. It's a very well done if you said that pointless answer would have added £250 to the jackpot. And right at the bottom from Legally Blonde, that's Reese Witherspoon on the right, and on the left, it is Bruiser. Two points. Very well done if you said that. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So here comes your second question. John and Peter, you have to win this one to stay in the game. Best of luck. It concerns... Apples. Quite simply, apples. Yeah, how do you like them apples? We're going to show you the names of five apples now, but they're in anagram form. Can you unscramble them and give us the best answer? OK, let's reveal our five anagrams of apples, and here they come. We have got... Does ridicule, repair my kilo, mar beryl, a gal... And snaring myth. I'll read those all again. Does ridicule, repair my kilo, mar beryl, a gal, and snaring myth. There we are. Now then, John and Peter, you go first this time. Um, okay, we're going with the top one. 
Red Delicious. Red Delicious. Yep. Red Delicious, say John and Peter for the top one. James and Oliver, the board is yours. Uh, right, we're going to play it safe. Apples you could, okay. is not our strong bit at all, yeah? No. So we're going <laughs> to go with the bottom one, uh, which is Granny Smith. Granny Smith, say James and Oliver. Granny Smith. So we have Red Delicious, Granny Smith. John and Peter said Red Delicious. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. We're near. There we are, it's right. Red Delicious. Down he goes. Five. Ooh. Fantastic. Five for Red Delicious. James and Oliver, you have gone for Granny Smith. Let's see how many people said Granny Smith. Absolutely right. Forty. John and Peter, you're back in the game. Very well done. After two questions, it's one apiece. Richard. That's brilliant work from Peter there. I think, have you ever heard of Red Delicious? Yeah. Or did you just work out the yeah. anagram? It's very, very well done. Actually, nothing to do with a Golden Delicious. Completely different no, variety, different. but it's, uh, it's an American apple. A gal is Gala. It's a big scorer, though. Would have scored 87 points. Mar Beryl is a very good scorer, actually. It's Bramley. Oh. Would have scored 12. And Repair My Kilo is another pointless answer. So anyone at home who got this, very, very well done. It is a York Imperial. York Imperial. A pointless answer. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Um, OK, now, here comes your third question. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. It concerns the wives of Henry VIII. The wives of Henry VIII, Richard. Yes, yeah, simply going to give you five questions about the six wives of Henry VIII. The most obscure answer is going to see you through to the jackpot round. Very best of luck to both teams. OK, so let's reveal our five clues to facts about the wives of Henry VIII, and here they are. We have got his fifth wife. The wife who married four times herself, the first wife to be executed, the wife buried beside Henry, and the wife who died ten years after Henry. I'll read those all again. His fifth wife, the wife who married four times herself, the first wife to be executed, the wife buried beside Henry, and the wife who died ten years after Henry. So there we are, five clues to facts about Henry VIII. Now then, James and Oliver, you go first again this time. I'm going to take an absolute educated guess, which is totally nothing to do with me. Um. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea, but I'm going to say that the first white to be executed was Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn, says James. Anne Boleyn, first wife to be executed. John and Peter. I have a sneaky feeling his fifth wife was Jane Seymour, I think. The wife buried beside Henry must have been one who outlived him, so she wasn't executed. I think we're going to go for the wife who died ten years after Henry, who I think is Catherine Parr. Catherine Parr, the wife who died ten years after Henry. Catherine Parr, say John and Peter. So, James and Oliver, you have gone for Anne Boleyn. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Anne Boleyn. It's absolutely right. 36. <laughs> 36. Very well done, James and Oliver. Now then, John and Peter, you have said Catherine Parr was the wife who died ten years after Henry. Catherine Parr. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Catherine Parr. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah. Uh, now there's a turn up. Look at that. James and Oliver, after three questions, you are through to the final. 2 1. Very well done indeed. Yes, uh, Catherine Parr sounds like the right answer, doesn't it? Because she was the last wife the and last she wife, and she yeah. survived him, but she died a year after him, and it was one of the uh, one of the marriages that was annulled. It was Anne of Cleves was the was the, the wife who died four years after him, would have scored four points as well. Would have been a terrific answer. Now Catherine Parr is an answer here, but she's an answer for the wife who married four times herself. Henry VIII was her third uh, husband, she had one more after him, six points that would have scored. Um, his fifth wife was Catherine Howard. Would have scored you 19 points. And actually, no, it wasn't Jane Seymour, but actually the wife buried beside Henry was Jane Seymour. And she would have scored 11 points. So Anacles, the best answer there. But it uh, turns out Anne Boleyn, the best answer on the show. Well done, guys. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. So our losing pair at the end of the head to head, I'm afraid it's John and Peter. Brilliant, brilliant head to head. Very exciting Again. indeed. Red, delicious. A particular high point, I'd say, but a very, very close fought, that one. 
Very exciting indeed. Well, it's been a real pleasure having you both on the show. John, Peter, true heroes of our childhood. Fabulous to have you on Pointless. Thank you so much for playing. John Thanks and Peter. Very much. Thank you. But for James and Oliver, it's now time for our Pointless final. Well, congratulations, James and Oliver. You've seen off all the competition and you've won our coveted Pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our Pointless jackpot for your charities. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,500. <laughs> well done. You made pretty easy work of that. I, I, I thought they had us in the last round, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, I, maybe. Maybe they might have. But then Anne Boleyn suddenly came think, riding uh, to your rescue. I think, I think you'd like to I think dedicate that to uh, Miss Young, uh, who used to teach us in, uh, in history, I think. Very good. Well, best of luck in this final round. The rules are very simple. To win that money for your charities, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. Do that and you will leave here with that £2,500. First, though, you've got to choose a category and here are your five options. They are chemistry, Formula One, American novelists, UK politics, Welsh bands. Um, all right. The UK politics could be anything. Chemistry didn't really appeal to me at school. So I can't really say too much of that. Do you know anything on the periodic table? <laughs> no, so I think that's out. Um, <laughs> so you Welsh bands? Yeah, we'll, we'll go Welsh bands, I think. OK, Welsh bands, here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Stereophonics UK Top 40 singles as they could. Richard? Yeah, we're looking for the title of any Top 40 single by the Welsh band The Stereophonics or a Top 40 single that had them as a named featured artist. So any Top 40 single by The Stereophonics where double A sides are released, either, uh, either name will count. Very good luck. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers and all you need to win that jackpot of £2,500 for your charities is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yep. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, Daniel, yeah, I think I'll tell them who's Dakota, because that's the number one. Dakota, the long way around. Yep. Um, have a nice day. Have a nice day. Uh, handbags on the glad rags. Yes. they did with uh, Rod Stewart. No, they didn't. They, they covered it. They though. covered it, though. Um, Hambo, uh, Glad Dragon and the Thief. Right. Um, stumped. I've got it. Um, there's a song called, I think, called it, it Means Nothing. Yeah, it means nothing without you. Um, was that a single? Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. Um, was this top 10 singles or just singles? Top, top 40 top UK singles. singles. Okay, yeah. That was it. That's what I'm, I'm reckon, pretty stumped on. There we are, saving side. Ten seconds left. Uh, any other? No, that's on the way around. OK, that's time up. So we're looking for Stereophonics UK Top 40 singles. I now need your three answers. What are you going to give me? OK, um, you go the, the long way around. The long way around. Uh, it means nothing. It means nothing. And... Handbags on the ground. Oh no, that was a really good Bartender and the Thief. And the Bartender and the Thief. I think that's the. I, I definitely know the song. I'm not sure if that's the title. Bartender but... and the Thief. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Of those, which thinks your best shot at a pointless answer? I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess the long way around. And I. I know that because it was the title for the Ewan McGregor program. Okay. And, yeah, uh, good. That's, yeah. Okay. So the long way round. We'll put that last. What's your least likely to be pointless? Do you think? And bags on the glad. Bartender and the thief. Oh. Bartender and the thief. Okay, we'll put that one first. <laughs> I don't know how handbags are oh, called. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's put those up on the board in that order then. And here they are: the bartender and the thief. It means nothing. And the long way round. Okay, so we were looking for Stereophonics UK top forty singles. Your first answer: the bartender and the thief. You thought was your least confident shot at a pointless answer. Only one of these needs to be pointless, remember, for you to win that jackpot, £2,500. So let's see how many people said the bartender and the thief. It's absolutely right. Down it goes, past the 50 mark. Now, if this goes all the way down to zero, you leave here with £2,500. It's still going down. It is all oh, nine. 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 It's a great answer. 
Sadly, though, we're only interested in pointless answers yep. in this final round, so I'm afraid that one won't win the jackpot for you. But uh, £2,500 will be going to your charities if you can win with one of these two remaining answers. James, what's your charity? Our charity is one that's very close to our heart, which is called the Help Harry, Help Others Charity, um, which is an amazing charity uh, started by a young guy called Harry Mosley. Um, yeah, basically, uh, Harry was a, uh, when he was seven, was diagnosed with a brain tumour. So he started making these, these bracelets. And uh, unfortunately, Harry passed away um, back last year. But um, before his death, he raised just over three quarters of a million pounds. Wow. Charity. Well, well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, very, very well done. Well, let's hope one of your two remaining answers will win that jackpot for the charity. OK, we are looking for Stereophonics UK Top 40 singles. Let's hope nobody said your next answer. It means nothing. Now, this has to be correct, then it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So, for £2,500, let's see how many people said it means nothing. It's absolutely right. The bartender and the thief took us down to nine. It means nothing, taking us down through the teens into single fingers. Down it goes, right. Dan still going down two. Very, very well done. From nine to two, it's all looking very good for your third and final answer, the long way round. It has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. This is your last crack at it. So let's see how many people said the long way round. Oh, no. Oh, bad luck. Wow. Well, two brilliant answers there. And uh, your second answer, it means nothing. I mean, so nearly, so nearly pointless. Um, unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so I'm afraid you don't win today's jackpot of £2,500. However, as it's a celebrity special, we're going to donate 500 quid to each celebrity pair for their respective charities. And you've been brilliant, brilliant investments. <laughs> Great to have you on the show. And you do get to take home the uh, pointless trophy as well, so very yeah, well done. Which you're, uh, which you're very well. Richard. Yeah, the long way round, as you say, it was the Ewan McGregor TV series. Uh, it was on the B side of Dakota, so if you bought the Dakota CD, it was on there, but it wasn't the single, so it wasn't a top 40 hit, so it's tough luck. Uh, a couple of the others, you said handbags and glad rags would have scored you 13, have a nice day would have scored you 8. But there's some pointless answers up here, there's a few top 10 hits up here as well. Um, two big singles from uh, Performance and Cocktails, Hurry Up and Wait and I Wouldn't Believe Your Radio, both pointless. Madam Helga, which is a number 4 hit, uh, that was also a pointless answer. Uh, More Life in a Tramp's Vest, which is one of their very early hits from the, the 90s. Movie star they released online, My Friends, also a pointless answer. Uh, Pick a Part That's New was a pointless answer. And two singles from the Just Enough Education to Perform album, Step on My Old Size Nines and Vegas, two times. Both of those pointless. A couple more, Rewind, Since I Told You It's Over, and Superman, all of those pointless. Well done if you've got those at home. You've been terrific throughout, very, very well played, and sorry you didn't quite just hit the jump up. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, James and Oliver, but it's been fantastic having you both on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Brilliant, brilliant contestants. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>